What's up everyone and welcome back to Big 12 Hoops. Uh, I apologize for not uploading uh, the past couple days after some games have been played, but I was in uh, Oklahoma golfing for a couple days, so I couldn't really record and upload a quality video for you guys. But yeah, we have some ground to cover today uh, because I made my Saturday predictions and uh, there were four Big 12 games and like two of them got postponed. There's supposed to be five, all five, but three got postponed. So just the Baylor-Texas Tech game was played and just the K-State-Texas game was played. So we'll talk about those briefly. And uh, last night, uh, Kansas battled Baylor uh, in what wasn't really a good game and then ended up being pretty good there in the second half. A uh, good fight from the Jayhawks there. But uh, yeah, we'll start with the two matchups on Saturday that did not get postponed. Um, Baylor-Texas Tech, I watched essentially every second of this game. And let me tell you something. Texas Tech is a scary basketball team. Now, you're probably thinking, yeah, you're Jack, you're telling us stuff that we already know. Chris Beard is one of the best coaches in men's college basketball. That's not an argument. Look at what Chris Beard has done down there in Lubbock land. Look at what he has done. They, they were the last. There wasn't a national championship last year. So technically, the Red Raiders were in the last national championship and took Virginia a one seed to overtime. Texas Tech is a scary team. If I had to pick one team in the Big 12 that I would not want to play the most behind Baylor, it would be Texas Tech. I would rather play Texas on the road two times in a row rather than them come to Lawrence one time than play Texas Tech. Texas Tech is a horrifying basketball team to play. I'm, they're gritty. They outworked Baylor. Baylor's better than Texas Tech, okay? Baylor has a better basketball team than Texas Tech. But Texas Tech outworked Baylor and just came up short 68 to 60. I believe my prediction was 77 to 70. And I knew this, or after I uploaded that video, I was watching it again. And I was like, Jack, you idiot. They're not going to score in the 70s. And I thought about making a little edit at the bottom saying that prediction's too high. But just I just wanted to stick with whatever I said, even if it was wrong. Uh, but yeah, Baylor beat Texas Tech 68-60. to And Tech had the lead a couple times by one, uh, three points, I believe, under five minutes to go. Which isn't saying anything in today's game um, with how it is. But uh, Texas Tech was just going after loose balls. Mac McClung, anytime the ball is in, whoops, I have my sound on. Anytime the ball is in Mac McClung's hands, I mean, I mean, you 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 assume something good is going to happen. Either a bucket, a steal, he gets to the free throw line. Something good is going to happen when Mac McClung has the ball, um, and he's just exceptional. But like I said, Baylor is just better. And so even though Tech outworked him, Baylor was able to find a way to win. Baylor did not play that good in that game. Neither team shot well. It was late in the second half and a graphic popped up. And both teams were like 5 for 25, give or take, from uh, three-point range. So Baylor played average for Baylor and still won on the road by eight points. Uh, they have not uh, won a game by less than eight points all season long, and they remain undefeated. Um Last night, they won by eight points against the Jayhawks, so they continue their dominance throughout the Big 12. We'll get to that matchup here shortly. But Texas Tech, you don't want to play them, believe me. And the other game, Kansas State-Texas, what is there to say? Texas wins it 82-67. And I didn't get to watch much of this game because I wasn't uh, um, home to watch it. And uh, or, or I apologize. It was on the Longhorn Network, which I hate. Um, so I wasn't able to watch it, but I saw the score and I was like, hey, that's pretty close to my prediction uh, for my prediction video a couple days ago. And I went back and watched my prediction video and I had Texas 82 to 65. Real stuff. That's legit. I was off by one basket. One basket. Um, and, I, and if I was watching that game live, I would have been a nervous wreck. So I'm glad that I don't get the long horn, horn network for that reason, because I would have been hoping that K-State stuck at 65 rather than 67. But yeah, K-State is still searching for an identity, and Texas is not an ideal team to try to find an identity against. Texas is just loaded. I talked about their backcourt 
um, in my last video, them and Baylor is going to be, they still have to play Baylor twice and vice versa, going to be two great, great games that I cannot wait to watch. So uh, moving on now to uh, last night's lone Big 12 game, Kansas at Baylor. Right out of the gate, I thought, I mean, I'm a huge Jayhawk fan. Huge. And anything that I say that makes KU seem average or bad here in this video, trust me, it is so hard for me to say. Ever since I have been born, um, I'm 19 in 2001, Technically, I wasn't really able to watch basketball until I was probably six or seven, but technically, since I've been alive, KU's only lost the Big 12 three times. We started our streak in 2004 and then didn't lose again until 2019. We won in 2001, 2002, lost in 03, and then won from 04 to 19, 04 to 18, and lost it the 19 season, 19 20 season, 18 19 season and then won it last year. So I have only, I, I never see KU lose the Big 12. I am not used to this. But before we kind of get into that, let's talk about the matchup last night. I thought Baylor was going to win this game by 30 points. I knew, I know KU's got pride, and I know that KU has this and has that. Trust me, I know. But it, this year's team is just a little bit different for Baylor and Kansas. Baylor arguably the best team in the league. Their backcourt is better than Gonzaga's. I think they're better defensively than Gonzaga. I think that they would beat Gonzaga. I think that they are better than Gonzaga. Is that a popular opinion across the nation? Probably not, but I think Baylor is better than Gonzaga. They're the best team in the league. Now, the standings may not change unless Baylor keeps proving stuff. Standings don't matter. I'm going to make a video about that. Rankings do not matter when it comes to who will win a game. They do not matter. And just because Baylor's ranked two, if they are at the end of the year, doesn't mean that they're not going to win the national championship, that they're not the best team in the league. Rankings don't mean anything. But Baylor's probably going to stay at number two. Why? Because Gonzaga plays no one. Now, have they proved themselves and are they a phenomenal team? Yes, because they played good teams this year. But moving forward, they play no one. They don't have to play top 10 teams every week like Baylor in the Big 12. There's Texas ranked at 5, Kansas ranked at 9, Baylor ranked at 2, Tech at 11, West Virginia 14. The Big 12 is a hard league to win night in and night out, let alone go 2-0 every week. Gonzaga plays Pepperdine, St. Mary's, and BYU. I'd love to be in that league. I need to calm down here. Uh, where was I at? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just get a little bit fired up. Gonzaga is a great team, and they have proved themselves and deserve that one spot right now. But what I'm saying is they're not going to lose moving forward because they play no one. Unless they reschedule that game against Baylor. I would, I would love to see that game. Oh my goodness, I'd love to see that game. But the game last night, Kansas and Baylor. It looked like Baylor was going to run away with this and hold a double-digit lead all game and win by 25. It truly did. It did. Uh, the reason why KU was still in it was because of three-point shooting. Christian Brown was like 4-for-4 four four in the first half. Uh, he scored 17 on the night. Leading score, Ochai Abaji scored 16-13 in the second half. 4-for-7 four from three-point range. Jalen Wilson with just four points. He was our best player. Whenever the ball was in his hands... He was the guy where you could take a moment, exhale, kind of like I was talking about McClung earlier. You knew a basket or something positive was going to happen. But ever since David McCormick started playing well, I'm not saying this is why Jalen's descended, but that's the time frame. Ever since David McCormick started playing pretty good basketball um, is whenever Wilson went down. So probably a couple weeks ago, Wilson, this is his second game scoring four points in like the last four games. Uh, it, 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 this is where this Kansas team is at. In the past, we have had teams where if uh, somebody like Wilson had a bad night, other players would step up. And that's where this KU team this year was at early on. But recently, they haven't been able to gel. Uh, like M McCormick, who averages 20 a game uh, the last three games, scored. Six last night and had 2,003 minutes. 
sat the bench a lot of the game. It, it, and uh, uh, Christian Brown, 17 points, 5 for 6 from 3-point range. Ochai Abaji, 16 points, 4 for 7, 3-point range. And then after those two, it drops down to Mitch Lightfoot with 8 points, who works his tail off. Great job, Mitch Lightfoot. You're a great bench player. Love him. Love him. Bill Self said years ago that if you were to cut Mitch Lightfoot open, a Jayhawk would fly out. You just see that on the court. He'll take charges, try to block shots, and just battle for his team. Um... But this Kansas team is just in a different spot. My dad put it really well. He texted me this last night during the game. I was outside shooting baskets on our uh, driveway basket uh, basketball hoop, and because I, I just I get so worked up during these KU games, and I get upset whenever they're losing. So I was just shooting baskets during the game, and Dad texted me, and he said, "There are probably eight teams that just have better players than Kansas this year." And there are probably eight teams that have comparable players. And that's so true. Is Kansas a bad basketball team? No, not even close. They're 4-3 and three in the Big 12 and have lost to two top five teams. Now, is that an excuse? No, it's not. Because if we're that good, we should have won one of those games. But here's where it's different. Last year, we had better players. Kansas was the best team in the country, and do not even begin to argue with me in the comments section. Don't even try. Kansas was head and shoulders better than anybody else. We trailed behind Baylor by one game in the Big 12 after they beat us in Lawrence all season long, and we never lost a Big 12 game. Never lost after that. Went 17-1 in the Big 12. Baylor chokes loses two out of their last three, four games, one at TCU and one at Texas Tech, one at West Virginia, one at West Virginia, one at TCU to close out the year. Lost the Big 12 by two games after leading it all January, February, early March. Choked it and lost. Kansas was the best team. That's not the case this year. Marcus Garrett has taken two, three steps backwards from where he was last year. He's remaining... Naismith Defensive Player of the Year. You wouldn't be able to tell it this season. His ability to attack and finish the rim on a game-in, game-out basis, basis is good. It's pretty impressive at times, but last season was so much better. The way he created offense by using his defense last season is just head and shoulders above where it is this year. I think pressure and the spotlight got to Marcus Garrett this season. Ochai Abaji is great. I'm just going kind of down the line here. Christian Brown's really good. David McCormick has started to find his footprint here the last couple weeks. Jalen Wilson, this is his first year playing. He played in like one, two games last season and hurt his ankle. This team is going to be really, really good next year. I mean, KU basketball is never bad. KU basketball is never bad. We had a down year two years ago. Finished like top 15 in the country and had a chance to win the Big 12 until the last week. And that was a bad year? Yes, in our standards, in our eyes. But teams would kill to have a Jayhawk bad year. And this may be, this may be another one. The Jayhawks are 10-4, and four, ranked ninth in the country. Are they overrated? I think yes. 4-3 and three in the conference. I sound a little harsh on them. The, but here, here is a, here's kind of the comforting statement throughout this rough season as a Jayhawks fan. This is the best the Big 12 has been, I think, in my lifetime. I'm 19, so if you're older, let me know. Has the Big 12 ever been better than this season? Defensively? Defensively. Texas. Texas Tech. Baylor. West Virginia is pretty good defensively. Has the Big 12 ever been, and Texas, if I didn't say them, this good? Is this the Big Twelve? Is this the best Big Twelve we've ever seen? It is so hard, so hard to win the Big Twelve every year, and KU has won it fifteen out of the last sixteen years. And this is a bad year for the Jayhawks because this is the best the league's been. Texas, Texas is as seasoned as a filet mignon. Baylor is the exact same way. Veterans across the backcourt, shooters, 
one big man who's pretty good. Uh, that Tachachua, I know I said that wrong for Baylor, is not bad. Jericho Sims is amazing inside. Kai Jones can score inside and out. They're phenomenal. They're great. Texas Tech is good old Texas Tech. Scary as crap. Don't want to play them. Maybe split with them. Maybe, maybe sweep them. KU's already beat Tech early, so the worst we can do is split. West Virginia's West Virginia. Bob Huggins' coach are going to work hard defensively. Derek Culver, I think they play better without Shibway this year. Scary. This is the best Big 12's ever been. And this is a bad year for KU because this is not the best KU has been in recent years. It, it, we got caught on a bad note. I would rather have this year's team last year and last year's team this year. But that's basketball. That's the nature of the beast. That's not how it works. Teams lose players. Teams uh, lose some players' skill to pressure. <laughs> Marcus Garrett. Things happen. Things happen. When I say Marcus Garrett from pressure, I just mean like he hasn't played as good, and I think it's from pressure. I don't think he can run the point guard. I think he needs to be a two or three and come off ball screens. But uh, it's it, this is tough for Kansas. They're not going to win the Big 12. They're not. Uh, Baylor's going to win the Big 12. I'd like to see Texas win just because Baylor's annoying, but uh, I, I, Baylor's going to win the Big 12. Will they go undefeated? No, they won't. People are thinking, dude, Baylor's so good. They're not going to lose a game. They're going to lose a game. They're going to lose a game, if not multiple. I promise you that. Uh, if Texas doesn't beat them, like, people will say, well, Texas is the only shot at beating Baylor. No, they're not. No, they're not. Will Texas maybe beat Baylor one out of the two games? Maybe. But uh, it, it's going to be one of those awkward things. Oklahoma State might get them on a bad night. Uh, TCU might get them on a bad... Well, I take that back. TCU's horrible. West Virginia might get them on a bad night. Texas Tech almost had them. Will Tech beat them in Waco? Baylor is going to lose this season. Uh, just, I promise you that. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. If I was Baylor, I would want to lose going into March Madness. I would not want to go into that thing undefeated. Are you kidding me? And just because you lose one, two games doesn't mean you're going to lose the Big 12. I think that a team with uh, two losses max, I'm going to say two losses wins the Big 12. Two losses wins the Big 12, whether that be Baylor or Texas. Two losses wins the Big 12 this season. Last year, one loss won it. Jayhawks were great. Baylor was behind him with three losses. This year, I'm meeting in the middle. Two losses wins the Big 12. Jared Butler had 30 points last night. You know who he reminds me of? Devontae Graham. Jared Butler did not miss last night. Every time he shot, you knew it was going in. Jared Butler was 7 for 9, nine from the three-point range. Behind him, dropped dramatically. Macy Oteague had 13. Didn't make a three. Davion Mitchell, 10 points. And then that Chachua had eight. So, and Mark Vidal only had four. I know he specializes on defense, but Mark Vidal were just four. Four points. So are the Jayhawks a bad team? No. Are they a great team? No. They lost some players. Uh, Yoke Azabuki, Devon Dotson, Isaiah Moss helped gel this team. This team is not bad. When they shoot the ball well, they'll beat you. They can beat you. Um, but they have a long ways to go. They're young. Uh, I know they have a few starters returning, but it's just different. It's just different. This team's under a lot of pressure, I feel like, coming off of last season. But just, just look forward. Look at this. Jalen Wilson, technically freshman, redshirted last year. David McCormick is a junior. Christian Brown is a junior. Sophomore. Christian Brown is a sophomore. Ochai Abaji redshirted, and we took it off that year, so he's a junior. Look at this here. Marcus Garrett, senior, not too big of a loss. Mitch Lightfoot, senior. Dewan Harris, freshman, reminds me of how Marcus Garrett was his freshman year. Tristan Inaruna, sophomore. And Chris Tehan's going to graduate. Kansas Jayhawks are going to be good next year. And I'm warning you, the Jayhawks are coming. And don't say I didn't warn you. They got caught on a bad year for themselves and having to play inside the best Big 12 ever this season. The Jayhawks are coming.
Baylor, who knows who they're going to lose to the draft. On paper, they, they should have Butler and Mitchell coming back next year. They're going to lose Vital and Teague. We'll see who they lose. Baylor's generally pretty good every four years. Pretty dang good every four years. And KU's pretty good every year. And then average probably every decade. KU got caught on a bad note. They have work to do. They have growth to go through. They're going to be fine. KU's going to win some more games. KU's going to lose some more games. None of this stuff matters when March comes, and we'll see what happens. Thank you guys for joining me, and if you watch till the end, comment down below, because uh, I'd love to know if you hung with me this whole time, and I know it's more of something that you want to listen to rather than watch, but uh, yeah, the Big 12's great. Uh, KU is kind of caught on a bad year, and uh, that's just how it is. It is what it is. We'll move on, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for hanging with me.